Joe? Hello, Mr. Drucker. How's uh, every little thing? <laughs> Getting bigger and bigger. It won't be long now, huh? Could be today. No. Uh, confidentially, what do you hope it'll be? A boy or a girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's plain and safe. Here are a few things I need. Oh, fine. Well, what do you hear from your mom? Well, she's still taking care of Aunt Ruth, but I'm hoping she'll be back in time for the baby. Well, if I know Kate Bradley, she'll be back if she has to crawl on her hands and knees. <laughs> oh. uh, let's see what we've got here. Hello, dear. Did I miss the store? No. Mrs. Douglas. What happened? Break trouble? It's my transmission. Oh, you mean your transmission? No. I heard a clunk, and now it's missing. Well, I didn't know you drove. Yes, Ep has been giving me driving lessons on the tractor. Oh, well, how are they working out? Oh, fine. Oliver was going to put up a new barn anyway. Ah, hello, Betty Jo. Hello, Mrs. Douglas. Oh, I haven't seen you in ages and ages and... Oh? Something wrong? Well, you better watch your figure. It's very important. My figure? Well, you never attract a man that way. You must jiggle. What? You know, get up in the morning and go out on the road and... Chico. No. <laughs> you mean jog. Man jog, women jiggle. Well, if you say so. A anyway, the point is, you got the wrong idea about Betty Jo. She's expecting. Expecting what? Well, most folks around here are pretty well agreed on a baby. Oh, you must be very happy. Does your husband know? I think so. Oh, that's wonderful. I have to do something for you. Oh, yes, something very nice. I, I must tell Oliver. <laughs> Oh, what exciting news. Little Betty Jo is going to have a baby. I'll get it. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mr. Drucker, could you send the groceries over this time? Okay? Yeah, I'll be glad to. Oh, wait a second. I don't have a list. Well, I don't have one either. <laughs> Do you remember the list I gave you last Thursday? <laughs> well, I don't need any of that. Send everything else. <laughs> Well, that completes it. Well, what's that? Up until now, she was the only one in the valley who wasn't involved with my baby. <laughs> that baby's sure become a community project, all right. <laughs> ladies, ladies, ladies. Since Kate's away on her trip, I'm calling to order the every other Wednesday afternoon discussion club. Now, as I understand it, the unfinished business from the last meeting had to do with the club providing a gift for Betty Jo's baby. Now, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. The motion so carries. No, oh, Madam Chairman, Madam Chairman. <laughs> After all, it is supposed to be a woman's club. Chair recognizes Selma Plow. What about the nose? I didn't think there'd be any. Try us. <laughs> all those opposed to the motion signify by saying no. Oh, wouldn't you like to trap me into an unpopular stand? Thomas <laughs> <laughs> Cloud. Troublemaker. <laughs> so gay about? You mean Sore Heads Incorporated? So that's the every other Wednesday afternoon discussion club, huh? Just part of it. That's the Sunshine Committee. How's Betty Jo? This could be the day. That's why I brought her things over. What makes you think this is the day? Well, because Betty Jo said so. Did she talk to the doctor? No. Is she having any pains? No. Well, for crying out loud. Well, sue me. She said, I feel ready. Oh, boy. Are you a greenhorn about these things? Boy, I suppose an old bachelor like you is the voice of experience, huh? That's right. I sat right here while Kate had three of them. I can believe that. But somebody had to keep calm. That's what worries me about Wimble. What about him? Well, the poor guy hasn't slept in over a week. 
Every night, all night long, he sits out there by the cannonball, keeping up enough steam in case it's Betty Joe's time. That's no good. He can't keep that up. That's what I tried to tell him. I'll have to have a little talk with him about the fine art of relaxing. <laughs> Doesn't come easy for everybody. <laughs> Gotta put in a lot of work. Takes a lot of knack and finesse. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Joe, I just thought I'd better tell you. The big event could happen soon. Maybe even tonight. Tonight? Oh, Betty Joe, look, I've just given notice here. This is my last day, so do you think you could... Well, I mean, would you mind not having the baby till I get there? <laughs> well, I'll do what I can, but the... I'm not in this alone. <laughs> well, try your best, okay? Now, look, I'll do one more show and then leave. They'll just have to understand. Okay. Bye, Billy Joe. You hear that? Instructions from your Aunt Billy Joe. You better be nice to her, because she's apt to be singing you a lot of lullabies. Wake up! Wake up! Hey, Wendell, wake up! Come on, wake up, Wendell! Oh, is it time? I'm aboard. I'll get you to the hospital. <laughs> oh, no, you thunderhead. It's me, Sam. Well, what are you doing having a baby? <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, he was sound asleep. I was catching 40 winks. Oh, you sure had a good hold on him. Betty Joe, I don't know if he's a safe driver. It's okay. I'll ride in the cab. Then if Wendell dozes off, I can take over. I'm still the assistant engineer, you know. Well, yeah, but, uh... Oh, don't worry about him. He'll go wherever I go. <laughs> Oh, here's Thank you, Wendell. We got here sooner than I... You can let go now, Wendell. Oh. Uh, now, listen, Betty Jo. I know. Don't worry about you. <laughs> Hi, darling. Well, yeah, here we are. Thanks. Hey, Wendell, what gives? Haven't you got the hang of this thing yet? Oh, Steve, it's not his fault. He's just so exhausted from not having any sleep. Hey, what about it? Any signs yet? No, but... Well, I moved our things up to the hotel. I thought we ought to stay there until the time comes, okay? Oh, I think Wendell should come up and get some rest, too. <laughs> Wendell. Wendell. Wendell? What? Well, why don't you come up to the hotel and sleep? Oh, that sounds wonderful. But, uh, Even if it means missing a run. Now, come on. Well, all right, but don't anybody shut her down, because as soon as you give me the word, we got to be ready to zoom. <gasps> right to the hospital. <laughs> Oh, what an ad for tired blood. Hi. Thought you might like some lemonade. Thanks. I took some up to Wendell, but he seems to be dead to the world. Poor Wendell. He's so loyal. Betty Joe, do you really think it may happen tonight? Could be. That's why Steve wants us to stay here. Golly. I don't see how you can be so calm about it. So brave. I'm not being particularly brave. It's just that there isn't much I can do about it. I mean, just sitting there, contemplating on what's going to happen. The pain. The agony. Mommy Joe. Oh, you know what they always say. It's a woman's most terrifying hour. The moment of truth. And you have to face it all alone. 
I'm surprised you're just not petrified. Bobby Joe. Oh. oh, hi, Steve. I was just trying to bolster Betty Joe's confidence. Well, thank you, Mary Sunshine. Gee, what are sisters for at a time like this? Hey, isn't it about time to feed the dog? Trying to get rid of me? Yes. Uh. You know, honey, I am getting a little frightened. Well, maybe this will help. A letter from Mom. My darling Betty Jo, I'll be leaving here shortly and hope to be home in time for the big event. Meanwhile, my thoughts are with you. I only wish I were there to hold your hand and comfort you. I know that you're very brave, but there will be moments when you'll be frightened. But don't worry, my darling. It's the most natural thing in the world. Every woman is the first time anyway. I know I was. But do you know what that wise and wonderful man, Doc Stewart, did for me? He drove me past the Hooterville grade school just when all the kids were pouring out, and he said, look at them, Kate. They all got here the same way. That gave me just the courage I needed. And baby, I hope it'll do the same for you. Dear, dear mom, she always knows just the right thing to say. Gosh, I hope mom gets here. Gosh, yeah, she will. She just has to. She's been in on every important thing that ever happened to you and me. Why, as soon as I knew about us, Mom was the first one to know. I've got a problem. I kind of thought you did. What is it? Well, it concerns Steve and me. What about Steve and you? We're in love. <laughs> and will you ever forget when I found our dream cottage? Only it wasn't much of a dream then. <laughs> Are you all right? Well, I think so. I think so. Hey, that's very effective. It's even better than having a moat with alligators. Wait you see the inside. I'll bet it's nice. <laughs> oh, if Mom ever needed a sense of humor, she needed it then. I remember most what she said after our wedding. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, Betty Jo, when I saw you walking down the aisle in that dress, for the first time in a long time, I felt your father sitting beside me. And we were both so proud of you. Take care of her, Steve. God bless you both. Thank you, my very dear mother, for everything. She'll get here. You just know she will. Okay, you want your baby to have a messy-looking aunt. It's all a commotion. 
Oh, 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 it's time for the baby. It's time for the baby. Oh, I can't what? wake him. Who, Little? Oh, that lame brain, I'll get him. Out of the way, out of the way. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, that Joe really blows his cool in emergency. Well, let's get down to the cannonball. Darling, you look adorable in that, but uh, we wouldn't want to confuse them at the hospital. <laughs> I really think we have enough time to dress. We can't be in that much of a hurry. Wendell! Wendell! Wake up! Wendell, the time's come! Get up, fire up your engine! Wendell! You sure you're all right? <laughs> you think she's all right? Why don't you ask her? <laughs> Wendell won't budge. I've tried everything. Well, what are we going to do? Betty Jo's the only one that can run the train, and she can't very well. Why can't I? Betty Jo. What's the matter? You think I've lost my touch? No, honey, but look. <laughs> Darling, if you don't mind, I'd kind of like to have this baby at the hospital. Well, now, wait a minute, Betty Jo. Oh, please, Uncle Joe, let's not have a discussion. You and Bobby get on the train, and you come with me. You're the fireman. <laughs> Come on, dog. Uh huh. Ready, dog. Oh, my. <laughs> What's everybody doing? And we heard the whistle for Doc, so... Forget that. What are you doing running that train? It's a long story. Hadn't we better get going? I think you better ride up here, Doc. Yeah, I think I'd better. But, but, don't go yet, Betty Jo. Wait for me. Me too. <laughs> Darling, wait for us. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Douglas. Now, this was her idea, Betty Jo. I thought you said she was going to have a baby. She is. Well, then what's she doing up there? Why she... What are you doing up there? <laughs> it's a long story. If you want to hear it, climb aboard. Come on. We should not look at the way I'm dressed. Oh, come on. Well, okay. But this will be the first time I ever rode with a pregnant engineer. <laughs> Sarah, she opened the switchboard as soon as she heard the whistle. Anything happened yet? No. Boy, how long is this supposed to take? You mean girl, how long is this supposed to take? Huh? Gotta be a girl. They're always late. <laughs> Might be important. <laughs> Hello. Sam? Oh, no, no, this is Wendell. Wendell, what are you doing there? Where's the cannonball? I don't know, Kate. Somebody took it. And there's not a soul in the valley. Everybody's gone. <laughs> 
Say, that could be it. I'm stuck here at the depot. Oh, well, don't you worry, Kate. I'll get us there. Oh. <laughs> Get this organized. You're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now the odds will all face this way, and the evens will face this way. All right now. Mr. Snavely? Yes. Well, congratulations. You're the father of a fine boy. Thank you. That's wonderful. Nurse? Wait a minute. We were here before him. <laughs> Maybe we ought to take a number, like in the meat market. Lisa, forget about the number. All right, wait what kind of a rum roast you get next time. Oh, Lisa. Don't promise me. I am an odd. <laughs> Wendell, the hospital is just around the bend. I sure hope they have an extra bed. Hi, everybody. Am I too late? No, get in line. <laughs> Me? Mr. Elliot, your wife has just given birth to a beautiful six and a half pound baby girl. Did you hear that? A beautiful six and a half pound baby. Baby. Baby what? 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 A girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, how's Betty Jo? Well, wouldn't you like to see for yourself? Oh, you bet. Isn't that just great? Another girl. It would be like having a baby sister. Uncle Joe, you're not disappointed, are you? Me? Nah. I was hoping for a girl all the time. And I know just what I'm going to give her for the baby. An electrical hair dryer. Well, Lisa, uh, a baby hasn't any use for a hair dryer. Well, then dry whatever is needed. <laughs> Just look at her. Isn't she the most beautiful baby there ever was? Well, listen, I had a pretty adorable baby myself some 20 years ago. Well, did I do a good job? Doc, we're going to take from you every time. <laughs> Come on, Grandma. Darling, you're not disappointed, are you? Are you kidding? I'm on cloud nine. Thank you. For what? For letting me have a girl. <laughs> and I promise you, the next time I'll have a boy. And the next time, and the next, the next. <laughs> presentation.